Hi, we're Ellie and David, and we're overlanding across Europe and Central Asia in our Land Rover Defender, Yak. In this episode, we're in Kyrgyzstan. We camp on the beach at beautiful Isikul. Yak has trouble starting, and then we tackle one of our favourite tracks of the trip in the mountains of Altan Arashan. That was the hardest border crossing yet. Um, I went through first, I was going back and forth to different people. They got me to air, but they x-rayed the Land Rover. They wanted to look through the phones, the drone, and the camera. I didn't know Fleur's pass code, so... Yeah, we were separate from David. They yeah, made us go through, through, like, the pedestrian um, bit. And I didn't know Fleur's password, so I was just kind of guessing it roughly. Um, and then it locked for, like, half an hour, and they really wanted me to open it. I tried ringing Ellie, getting through. It was just a bit of a nightmare. And then once I got through, waited for ages, got through to the Kyrgyz side, and they got everything out as well. Wanted to search all of the bags. And Ellie and Fleur had no water. They were just waiting on the other side, no shade. Um, but we're through. We're in Kyrgyzstan now. But thanks to the Kazakh corrugation, we lost another cat on the same wheel, which is really annoying. Um, but if you've watched any of Grizzly and Bear stuff, we saw a guy called Nikolai who works in Bishkek, uh, and he's quite good with the Land Rover, so we're hoping he has a spare. Uh, so we're going there now to see if he's, he's got one, and then after that we'll head towards this cool lake. <laughs> <laughs> so we've come to Nikolai's and he's done a little sketch to see if he can kind of cut out some rubber uh, and basically mould a new uh, cap for us, which would be pretty amazing. So we've got some sketches going on here. We were asking Nikolai if there was anywhere in Bishkek where we could buy um, a spare cap but he basically said our Land Rover in Kyrgyzstan is a big problem so hopefully he'll be able to make one on his machine now, we'll see how it goes. I'm not enjoying seeing Yak up there. <laughs> this is Sam. This is Utah. From Germany. Germany. Oh. Trekking. Trek you know trekking? Mm -hmm. Jumping. Ah, oh, oh, wow. Jumping. Oh. <laughs> I found more play in the uh, back wheel bearing. Quite bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was just checking the exhaust that we got in um, Salzburg in Austria and it's already got a crack along here which is really annoying. Um, so yeah, we're going to have to do something about that. Mm, top quality parts. <laughs> So I think he's going to take the flange out and check the nuts on the hub, which kind of went in Georgia as well. I tightened them up and it was fine. So I'm hoping that it's just that and not wheel bearing. We have one more sweat, spare wheel bearing. Um, so we'll just see kind of what he finds when he takes it off. And the right hand side was fine. Just needed to tighten up the bolts a little bit, um, the uh, nuts. But this side, I think the bearings failed. But this is our last spare. Um, so obviously we'll be a little bit more vulnerable after we've used this one, but hopefully the others will last out. Maybe try and find one when we're back in a, a place that has Land Rover parts, but uh, yeah, so I think he's going to change the bearing now and it'll be a lot quicker doing it here than when I did it in Turkey just because he's got the tools and the means. So hopefully that'll be done soon and then uh, we'll be back on the road. So he's taken the hub off uh, and it looks like the bearing's stuck. So I think he's going to try and get it off now. The bearing must have warped really badly um, and it's kind of just stuck, but it's coming off now. So. We've got to knock out the racers so that the new bearings and racers can go in. Having a good gap here, Flo. <laughs> Asia, not good to land rover, depend. <laughs> not good. Yeah. Uh, Range Rover, uh, Discovery, not good. Mm. Big defenders, problem. Defenders are strong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. We've just said goodbye to Nikolai and we're heading out of Bishkek now um, towards Isik Cool. And Flair's also found a really cool canyon um, that we're going to stop at along the way. The fire was too hot, so Fleur's had an ingenious plan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get it. How hot? <laughs> oh. We're going to head into the city, to, into Karakol today to have a little look around and then we're going to head up into the mountains to Alton Arashan. So we just went to start the Land Rover a few times and it was making a really weird noise. So we're just checking it out under the bonnet to see if we can find out what it is. What do you think it could be, David? Sometimes the starter motor just the cogs don't line up, so I'm trying to hit it. I don't know where my mallet is, but I'm hitting it with my spanners at the moment. But it sounds like it's not getting a lot of power. Mm. It's not a fuse, you've checked the fuses, haven't you? We tried to bump start it, me and Fleur pushing it, but it's a bit hilly, so we didn't really get very far. There's a chance it could be the alternator. Um, I'm just gonna get Ellie to start it up one more time. I don't know, it, might, it sounds like it could just be a connection, it sounds like it's not getting a lot of power. Um, the starter motor, so I'm not really sure, but if we need to change the alternator, that's fine, we've got a spare. I'm going to replace the alternator with a new one, just see if that helps, and then hopefully we'll be able to get out of here, but uh, I don't know, it might be a wiring issue, it might not be something else, I don't know. So I'm just taking the alternator off, uh, and I'm trying to get this pulley off, and I've turned it, and I don't know if you can hear that. Obviously that's supposed to spin freely, so I'm assuming that's what's stopping the lander from starting, so hopefully if I can get this pulley off, and get the new one back on, we should be able to start up, no problem. But I need to figure out how to get this off first. 
we were just having a chat with the farmer um, and he came back with a load of food for us which is so sweet we've got some like gherkin things and eggs and donutty things so lunch is sorted moment of truth that would be a no then great at that point David ran off to find someone to tow us for a bump start and these guys came over in a truck to help us out someone then pointed us towards a mechanic's house in the closest town of Caracol Salim's uh, taken us to the guy who's trying to fix the starter motor he's completely stripped it it's quite amazing to watch and now I think there's a little part we might be missing so we're rushing to the car park shop which closes as a close suit uh, to try and find what we need and hopefully he'll be able to fix it we'll see This is the part we're looking for. It's just off the top of the starter motor, uh, just from the inside. So we're off to go and see if we can find it now. We've managed to find the part that goes at the top of the starter motor that I think this guy was looking for. Um, cost us 400 SOM, so that's four pounds. So really, really cheap. So hopefully it will be a nice, easy fix. He's just fired up the starter motor using Salim's engine, using his battery, uh, and it looks like he's fixed it. So all done uh, for, I think a total of eight pound 50. So really, really good news. Hopefully, and obviously we need to see if it actually works when we put it on yak. We're heading up to Alton Arashan this morning. Being the third most mountainous country in the world, Kyrgyzstan isn't short of breathtaking mountain tracks. Alton Arashan offered a challenging 14 km climb over boulder fields and mud whilst surrounded by stunning alpine scenery. It quickly became one of our favourite drives of the trip and we'd really recommend it to anyone, whether you're tackling it in a vehicle, on foot or horseback. The track's been really cool so far, I mean the scenery is really really stunning. Uh, it's been a little bit rocky but nothing too bad, uh, Fleur and Ellie have been kind of guiding me over the rocks, um, but again nothing too extreme. We've done four kilometres, I think we've got nine left, I don't know if we'll do all of it today, maybe we'll find somewhere to camp, um, we'll just see kind of how long it's going to take us to get to the rest of the uh, track. So I think we're heading that way, uh, and then when you get there I think there's a very small village, uh, and yeah just uh, I think a couple of walking tracks, we're looking forward to getting to the top. Glacier on the right here. There's a lot of rock fall over the track here. David's just walked up to check it out. 
it's looking a little bit hairy. What do you think? Yeah, I just think for a little look. Um, and we would do it probably, but we've had so many things go wrong with Yak in the last like couple of weeks. I just think it's a risk not worth taking. The third year along is where we're sleeping tonight. Okay. We think this might be some kind of horse yogurt. <laughs> so this piece of bread is the UK and we've been trying to explain where we live. Yeah. 